Hello, everyone. Greetings from Baguio City, the summer capital of the Philippines. Kumusta tayo, Amin? In behalf of our dear Bishop, our Mother Adeline, our Pastor Rachel and Pastor Melchor, and all our overseers, I greet you all. Happy first anniversary, Southern Europe. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you on your anniversary through this message. Our topic for today is standing firm in the last days. That is the topic we are going to speak this day. I hope everyone will be blessed. Okay, so this is a timely topic. This is the topic for each one of us, not only for all of you, but also for me. Standing firm in the last days. It says here, God is calling us to stand firm, stand firm these last days. It is God calling each believer to stand firm, to be strong in their faith. We will define stand firm. What is, what does it mean to stand firm? Ano bang ibig sabihin nito? Number one meaning, to refuse to abandon one's belief. Yung hindi mo tatalikuran, yung pananampalataya mo sa Panginoon. To refuse to abandon one's belief. What you have believed, hindi mo yun tatalikuran. Another meaning, to refuse to change decision or your position. To refuse to change decision or position. Uh, yan po ang ibig sabihin ng uh, standing firm. Okay, so, kumusta ang ating foundation? We have to check our foundation. So, again, let's read uh, the meaning. Refuse to abandon your belief on the Lord. Refuse to abandon your faith. On the Lord Jesus. Even when trials come or persecutions, rejections, oppositions, diseases comes, you remain steadfast, immovable. Okay, so uh, we have one song we used to sing it. What is the title of that song? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Very old na praise song. And then yung second stanza. The world behind me. The cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. That we, you are proclaiming that you are going to follow Jesus, whatever happens. That is the meaning of standing firm in your faith on the Lord. We will read in Matthew chapter 24, verse 9 to 15. Then you will be handed over to, to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. The one who stands firm to the end will be saved. We can stop in that, in verse 14. So, uh, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Marami pong magbabakslide. Marami po ang lalamig sa kanilang pananampalataya. 
nagadu dagiti to malikod ora itatanga panawen data tikait nang sa mundo ito Matthew 24:9 hanggang sa verse 14 uh, there will be persecutions there will be uh, trials of faith we have to expect trials to come there will be diseases ngayon po dito sa Baguio and La Trinidad marami po tayong mga kapatid na namatay na because of this covid may dalawa tayong pastor sa La Trinidad who are cremated already they are gone with the lord praise god they are they are elderly no and then we have so many leaders may mga pastors pa tayo na they are also suffering right now with this covid but uh, prayers prayers are non stop for them hallelujah uh, diseases will come to try our faith cancer cancer i want to thank god alam po na nabasa ninyo siguro yung uh, prayer request ni pastor Rachel and my name was there and uh, another name of a co-pastor and then pray for uh, these pastors who are who have cancer breast cancer that is a test of our faith and i want to thank the lord that i have overcome it already at first Nung sinabi ng doktor na, okay, you are stage 3A. You have to uh, go, go through chemotherapy and radiation. I was so stunned. I struggled. Ayaw ko po noon. Kasi ang ginagawa natin, when there was no COVID, we go to the hospital and visit patients. And then marami po yung mga cancer patients na binibisita, pinagpo-pray. But now god has to allow this one also though it is our fault it is not the fault of god na tayo rin ang mag experience ng ganun i want to thank the lord i have been crying when i heard the doctor uh read to me what is the uh, result of the biopsy that was last september 10 I cried to the Lord and I asked, Lord, why? Bakit po? Lord God, why? I was crying at the comfort room of Notre Dame and I was crying when I am going home. Praise God, uh, my face shield na nagsishield, hindi nakikita. Praise the Lord. And now I want to thank God. Sinabi ko kay Bishop, Bishop, I am struggling because of this uh, uh, disease. And then sabi naman ni Bishop, why are you struggling? Cancer is curable. Ang problema natin ngayon, itong COVID, ang dami nang namamatay. This is a trial of faith dito po sa Baguio ngayon at sa La Trinidad. Many of our brethren are sick. Nagtratrangkaso. Inuubo. Then like uh, pneumonia, and then after that, go pupunta sa hospital, and then many died. Most are members of this church. Cremated na sila, or else 24 hours lang, and then ibuburul na. So, sabi naman ni Mother Adeline, sabi niya, we are at your back. You're going to recover. God answers prayer. And then si Pastor Rachel naman nag-text siya, do not believe the devil's lie. He's lying to you. You are going to recover and you will continue to serve the Lord. And all the co-workers, and the leaders who have uh, encouraged me, that's why I can say now, I am an overcomer. Amen? So, God is good. God knows our load limit. Hindi po niya ibibigay yung hindi natin kaya. 
So trials will come. God has to allow trials to come to each one of us. For me, I almost stumbled without the encouragement of other people, of our pastors, our bishop, I almost fell. Yung foundation po that you shake. But I want to thank the Lord that he is our foundation. Jesus is the rock of our foundation and he is immovable. He is unshakable. Amen? Praise God. So trials and testings of faith will happen to test if we are standing firm even when difficulties come. Rejection comes. Persecution. Persecution. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can read in Matthew chapter 10, verse 21 to 22. Brother will betray brother. And a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. That is a, a, a warning. The one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And a promise. Another verse. Okay, so uh, let's read another verse. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, blessed are you when people insult you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Yung mga naunang mga believers, prophets, servants of God, they were persecuted. But they stood firm. They remained faithful even unto their last breath. Persecutions. Christian persecution. Christian persecution is any hostility experienced from the world as a result of our identification with Christ. Persecution will come. They will persecute you because of your faith. On the Lord Jesus. It is hostility experienced from the world, from unbelievers, family, those who are unbelieving families, our friends, because of your identification with Christ. Dahil ikaw ay isang nananampalataya, they are going to persecute you. They will kill you. Nakikita natin sa Facebook kung anong nangyayari sa Afghanistan. Yung last na nakita kong picture, yung mga kristyano inilagay sa plastic, cellophane, while they are alive. Hanggang mawalan sila ng oxygen sa loob. Mamamatay sila. They are dead, but they are in the Lord. Praise God. They have stood their faith. They did not deny Jesus. Yun po ang nangyayari ngayon. Persecutions are ongoing. But we are so blessed na walang ganun na nangyayari sa atin. Agyaman tayo ti Apo. Kada tayo, uh, ma-enjoy tayo, iti uh, a freedom of worship. But in other nations of the world, they cannot worship God freely. Numatiliwanda, mapapatay da. In this world, you will have tribulations. Punani Heso Kristo. In John chapter 16, verse 33, it is promised, pala, in this world, you will have tribulations. But Jesus said, I have overcome the world. It is the Lord Jesus inside us who is the reason and target of persecution. Bakit ba ang mga Kristiyano, they are persecuted, they are rejected, mauyoyawda. Why it is because of the Lord Jesus inside you, inside me. He is the reason. He is the target of persecution. Satan hated. 
God. Satan hated even the people of God. Satan hated Jesus. The reason the world hates the believers is because the world hates Jesus. But we thank the Lord. Kahit na ganun, ngayon po, uh, this coronavirus, it is allowed by God. God allowed this one to happen because he has a purpose. This, there's revival in these times. Marami yung mga nagbabakslad, pero marami rin mga tao na tumatawag kay Jesus Cristo ngayon. And they're being saved. Are being saved. Okay, so Jesus was tortured. Sabi dito sa uh, sa slide natin, Jesus was tortured and he was crucified. He died but he rose from the dead. Kung anong nangyari sa ating mga sa ating mga naunang mga believers and then the Lord Jesus himself Yun din ang mangyayari sa mga believers. Even these last days. These end times. We are so thankful that we are blessed, really, with freedom of worship. We will see how the disciples of Jesus died. I-review lang natin po. Yung 12 disciples ni Jesus Christ Kung paano sila namatay. But they did not turn their back on the, on the Lord Jesus. But they stood firm in their faith. Si James, he was beheaded by King Herod. This is the brother of Jesus. Peter, he was crucified upside down. Ayaw niyang ma, uh, maipada. Kini Jesus Christo. That's why he said, please, pakibaliktad po ang cross. Andrew, he was crucified on an olive tree. Puro crucifixion. Ang pagkamatay ng mga disciples, mga apostles. Thomas, he was tortured and burned alive. Na-torture na nga po. Pinuuran na pa alive. Philip, he was tortured and crucified. Matthew, he was behead, beheaded. Naputulan po ng ulo. Uray idigayam, agputputid na ti ulo. Kuna tayo no kalinga lang ti agputputid ti ulo. Nga ma or igurot. Nung idipay laan, putput dandan ti ulo dagiti iti adipon ni Apo Diyos. Nathaniel, he was skinned alive and then crucified. James, the less, he was beaten to death. Pinangpang urda. And then Simon was crucified. And then we have Tadeus. He was beaten to death by a stick. Pang urda nun. Pinangpang urda ni Tadeus. Matthias. He was stoned while hanged on the cross. Nakahang na nga sa cross. Binatubato da pay. John the Beloved, he was thrown into boiling oil, but he did not die there because God has a plan. God is in control of life. So they exiled him to the island of Patmos where he received the revelations. And then we have Apostle Paul. He was beheaded at Rome. Ang dami pong uh, trials din ang Apostle Paul. Ilang taon na nabalut. Gapo iti panagsirbi na kini Apo Diyos. They stood firm until their last breath. And then ganun po ang gusto ng Panginoon sa atin. He who stands firm unto the end will be saved. We do not know what kind of trials will come. 
Pero kung minsan tayo mga Kristiyano, ang liit lang na trial, nagbabakslide na tayo. Where are you, Lord? When I am suffering. Minsan, uh, bakit mo ako iniwan, Panginoon, nung ako ay uh, nagsasuffer? Pero if you remember the footprints in the sand, sabi ng Kristiyano, uh, Lord, bakit nung grabe na ang trials ko, iisang pair na lang ng footprint ang nakikita ko. Ba't mo ako iniwan, Panginoon? Pero sabi ni Heso Kristo, at that time, I carried you. That's not your footprint. It's mine. He who stands firm to the end will be saved. Okay. In the future, we can read in the book of Revelations, chapter 13, okay? Verse 16 to 17, that's the marking. Time will come that the beast, the Antichrist, will mark his people. Tayo pong mga Kristiyano, we are marked. God has to mark his people too. And the mark of believers is the Holy Spirit. He's going to fill his people with the Holy Spirit. Mamarkahan po tayo. Minarkahan na po tayo. There's a seal of ownership. And Jesus knows kung sino yung sa kanya. Kasi may Espiritu Santo sa atin. Amen? The beast also will have to mark his own people through the mark of the beast. And the number is 666. Anyone who will take the mark will be burned in hell forever. That will be a test of faith. Brethren, brothers and sisters, that will be a test of faith. Ito mangyayari in the future. We are being prepared for that. Itong coronavirus po, this is a dress rehearsal for what will happen in the in that new world order yung classing mundo na everything is in control by the antichrist one world government one world currency one world religion okay so it is a dress rehearsal, itong coronavirus. Uh, they are uh, testing. They are trying to see if they can control the world. And nakayangan nila. Ngayon, puro lockdown lahat. Kahit nga dito sa Baguio ngayon, we are on GCQ. Medyo mahirap ang papasok. Medyo mahirap ang pupunta ka sa iyong outreach. Itong uh, mga young people na pupunta sa Tuding, ayaw papasukin. Pupunta sa Itugon, ang hirap pumasok. Hindi nakapasok yung mga pastors natin na punta sa kanilang destino. Everything is in control. Kahit nga sa paggamit ng face shield and face mask, you cannot enter anywhere without those. Ngayon, yung vaccine naman. Mm. So, praise God. Okay, we go to what is the next. It's part of the end times. Jesus' coming is very near. And one, uh, let's read that about the rapture. Rapture 
is the next major event in God's calendar. Among Christians, it is the most important event in the Bible prophecy. Ito pong rapture na ito, most important event in Bible prophecy, sabi dito sa ating definition. Rapture is the transformation and catching up of believers dead or alive to meet Christ in the air. Ito po ang pinakahihintay nating lahat. And anytime it can happen. That Jesus is coming for his bride. And you and me are one of those na kanyang susunduin so that we will be forever with the Lord. The problem is many will not be caught up. Many will not be ready. Not all Christians will be ruptured, sabi po. Many will be left behind. Ito ang nakakatakot. Yung tayo po ay maiiwan. Alam nyo, mga Pilipino, very emotional yan. Ayaw nilang maiiwan. So pag nasa airport ka, nag-iiyakan sila. Umiiyak yung maiiwan, umiiyak yung aalis. Pero hindi na siguro ngayon. But during rapture, this, there is no second trip. If you are left behind, you will not see the face of Jesus. You will see the face of the Antichrist. We have to be ready. We have to live right. We have to live a sanctified life to be ready for this coming of the Lord Jesus. There was a time nung nasa Felix po kami, sabi ng, it was, I was so new. And then sabi ng pastor namin, Jesus is coming. And we call it the rapture. He's going to take us with him. It will be secret for believers only. Hindi po alam ng mga ng mundo ito. But only those who have the spirit in them. This is a mystery. So Lord, paano po ang rapture? Tapos ano nga tati rapture ko na? At it is my question because it was my first time to hear about that topic. So during that night, I slept. And then I have a dream two times. Parehas na panaginip. So, nakita ko sa taas, on sa langit, second heaven, ang isang nakaputing anghel, and then may hawak siyang trompeta. And then, he started to blow the trumpet, and then I started to rise up. Hindi naman mabigat yung katawan kasi there is a transformation in the twinkling of an eye. I experience how to be ruptured. That was many years ago. And then I slept again. So ganun pala ang rapture, sabi ko. I slept again for the second time, the same dream. I start to rise. I started to rise up. And then I woke up. Nagising po tayo. Nung nagising ako, sabi ko, Lord, sana tuloy-tuloy na yun. But that was just a dream. And Jesus Christ, uh, allowed me to experience that dream, ganun pala. Apag kidunti mata, mabaliwan tibagi, and then you will rise up. Hindi po mabigat. Kasi naging yung katawan mo na flesh, parang hangin na tumataas. You're going to meet the Lord in the air. There's a meeting in the air. And He will take us with Him and then we will have that marriage banquet in heaven. Praise the Lord. So rapture, this is a very important event na huwag po nating baliwalain. Ang rapture, it is for believers. It is for free believers. And then, yung sinabi ko kanina, we have to live a righteous life, a sanctified life, a right life para po tayo nakaprepare. 
not all Christians will be raptured. Okay, so ang sabi sa Matthew chapter 25 verse 1 hanggang sa verse 13, if you, I know you have read that already, that's the story of the ten virgins. Five were wise. They have oil in their lamp and they have extra oil. Hindi lang na yung kanilang uh, lampara, kataga uh, apoy pailaan, but they also have extra oil with them. And when the bridegroom came, they were ready to enter with the bridegroom. And then 50% of the church, that is five out of 10, they were foolish. Why are they foolish? They have no oil. The oil speaks of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. Pag nawalan na po tayo, na drain na tayo ng oil, no more fire in the life, in our lives we might not be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus. But if we have the fire of the Holy Spirit in our life, and we have the extra oil na anytime na mawalan tayo, we can put it in our lamp para hindi po mamatay yung apoy ng Espiritu Santo sa ating buhay. Anytime Jesus can come, and we are ready to fly with him. Amen. Praise God. Why many will be left behind? Why many? Okay. One is lukewarmness. You are lukewarm. You are not hot. You are not cold. Nasa middle ka lang. Pero ayaw ng Panginoon ng lukewarm. Alam nyo? Ang Panginoon mahilig din pong magkape. Kasi ang tao, kung gusto kong magkakape siya, gusto niya yung mainit na mainit. Kahit nga ako, pag nagkakape ako, dyan niya masinsinit tidila. Diyay tikayat tayo. Kas dyay mat itikayat ni ako Diyos. Or else, kung na na, napinpintas garod nun na lang niis ka, mahilig din pala sa halo-halo. Pinakamasarap na halo-halo yung sa Chowking. So, alam kong may Chowking po dyan, sa uh, Rome, sa Italy. But look warmness. Ito prada ka iti Diyos. He will vomit us if we are lukewarm. Why many will be left behind? One is lukewarmness. You go to church, but just for for you to give your attendance, magpa-check lang po ng attendance, kaya pumunta ka sa church. Kasi, kahanapin ka ni pastora. Ni pastora. Look, warmness, you are not praying anymore. You are, you are cold. You cannot pray anymore. You cannot read your Bible anymore. Look, warmness, you are not serving. Another, backsliding. You are backslidden in the heart. Sa labas siguro, okay, you keep smiling, but deep inside the heart, you are so cold, you're backslidden. Another, fruitlessness. Wala pong bunga, mga kapatid. Hindi po dahon ang hinahanap ni Jesu Cristo. Bunga ang gusto niya. The fruit matters. What is this fruit? Of course, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If we have the Holy Spirit, we have the fruit. The fruit of souls. Souls who are evangelized. Souls who are touched because of our lives. Ginasagid tayo nga karkararwa. Kakamsa. Bunga. Why many will be left behind? Ang dami pong reasons. Because of riches of this world. Because of relationship sa mga opposite sex, sa family, 
Ang dami pa pong reasons why many will be left behind. But our target, brethren, brothers and sisters, our goal is we will not be left behind. But when the trumpet calls, we will fly and meet the Lord Jesus. Pag po naiwan tayo, wala na po. Uh, hindi ko alam ang itsura ng mundo. After mga believers ay nawala na. No more light, no more soul. No more Holy Spirit. Kasi ang Holy Spirit siyang mag-transport sa atin pataas. So what is the kind of life pag ikaw ay naiwan? It will be controlled by the Antichrist. Okay, our theme for this year is in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Ipaglaban po natin ang ating pananampalat. Ipaglaban po natin ang ating relasyon sa Panginoon. Ipaglaban po natin ang ating love life with the Lord Jesus. Take hold of the eternal life. Take hold of that eternal life. We also can read in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. Ano yung sabi doon? Put on the full armor of God. Okay, so... Uh, Sabi doon, you put on the full armor of God. For the day of evil is upon us now. The day of evil is upon us now. Alam niyo po itong coronavirus. This is a day of evil. So we have now to put on. This is a fighter's verse. This is a soldier's verse. Sundalo. We are soldiers of God. We are soldiers of the king. And this verse is for us. The day of evil has come. So we have to put on the whole armor from head to foot. Para po, pagdating nitong day of evil, dumating na nga ang day of evil, we are ready. We will stand firm and fight till the end. Amen. We will stand firm and fight till the end. Because you are a fighter. Okay, so again, we will read it about the coronavirus. It is a dress rehearsal for the new world order. There are, we are being trained para sa uh, klase ng mundo na pinapangarap ng mga mayayamang tao who are trying to control this world. Okay. Sabi po sa slide natin, for us believers, there is beauty in COVID-19. Hindi po lahat ay ugly. Kahit na maraming namamatay ng mga pasyente, ngayon nga, may, may kapatid din ako na nasa BGH, our, my first cousin. Siya at kanyang anak, andun ngayon. They are fighting for their lives. Pero yung uh, Yung mother, uh, wala na. Patay na daw ang kanyang utak kasi walang oxygen sa katawan. Anytime, they're going to declare her dead. But uh, that can be the ugliness of this coronavirus. Positive po sila. But we can still say there is beauty in COVID-19. There is beauty in COVID-19. Why? Dito po sa Lions, yun po ang destino ko ngayon. Ipapasalamat tayo. Uh, Lions was closed for nine months. Nag-close po sila. Kasi hindi po sa atin yung building. But we are renting the hall. So nine months na nag-close. Ang ginawa po ng Panginoon, He opened doors. And we call those doors uh, door openings na um, house churches 
So at least 14 house churches was open during the time na close ang lions. Praise the Lord after nine months. Nag-open po ang lions last January. And then, praise God. Yung dalawang house church, kasi maliit sila, they returned to Lyons, pero we have at least 12 local churches now. Daughter church, daughter churches. For nine months, alam nyo mo naman, no? Nagsikog ti babae. Nine months. Ngayon pa nakita ng babae, nag-anak, nag-anak. Iti 12 nga babies. Adati uh, twins, adati triplet. Adati nakita ka triplet, pero wala pa akong nakita ng quadruplet o wala akong nakita ng 12. Mga aso lang po, mga baboy. But we thank the Lord. The devil meant it for bad. Itong COVID, he closed the doors of churches. Yung iba, hanggang ngayon, closed pa rin. Pero tayo pong mga free believers, we do not want closed doors. We want, we pray, Lord, open more doors. More doors to be opened. So marami pong mga uh, openings, door openings dito sa Baguio uh, starting last year. Ayaw po namin na puro online services. We want a face-to-face -face worship together with our brethren. So uh, ganun po. And then not only in Lions, in all the other local churches, may mga daughter churches na sila during this COVID-19. Amen. So nga in Madu, iti pagimungan in Madu. Problema natin, Lord, who will be pastoring these local churches that are open. We thank God for young people. We thank God for uh, leaders in the church. Wala pong training, but Sila na ang nagpapastor ngayon. And then we thank the Lord that those church are flourishing. They're growing in numbers. Dumadami sila. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is beauty in COVID-19. Yung mga iba na mamatay sila, but they receive the Lord Jesus and they fly to heaven. There's beauty. What to do to keep standing firm, firm in these last days? What are we going to do so that we will keep standing strong, standing firm these last days? Number one, continuous obedience. Continuous obedience. Wow. Kasi kung... Uh, Nag-stop tayo, hindi na continuous obedience. Obedience is very important. Obedience to Jesus and his word. You check your foundation. Jesus is our foundation. The word of God is our foundation. We have to obey the Lord Jesus. Obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Obey the word of God. Also, obedience to our spiritual leaders. Everybody has a pastor. Wag mo pong sasabihin na ikaw ang, ang pastor mo si Jesu Cristo. Of course, Jesus is the chief shepherd. He is the shepherd of our soul. But he has put under shepherds to take care of us. Marami pong pastors. They are pastoring us. And then, dyan po sa mga local churches ninyo, sa Southern Europe, you have your pastors. Maybe they are not full-time, but they are doing their best to pray for you, to cover you in times of storms. Obey your spiritual leaders. Let's obey our leaders. Alam niyo po, this October is a Pastor's Appreciation Month. It is a Pastor's Appreciation Month. Appreciate your pastors. 
love your pastors. Pray for your pastors. Muminsan nag naglaka nga manggurgura iti pastor. Kagurgura mo kitkitan ti pastor mo. But no, obey. If you want to be blessed, the secret is obey. Obey your pastor. Wala pong pastor na magsasabi ng uh, uh, evil na gagawin mo. Obey your pastors. Obedience. Continuous obedience. Obey what the word of God says. Pag sabi po ng Panginoon sa kanyang salita, we have to give, we have to pay our tithes, then pay your tithes. Give offerings. Support the ministry. Alam nyo, kahit marami tayong pera, kung hindi po blessed, kasi hindi mo ibinigay ang para sa Panginoon, then you are not blessed. You are not happy. Your money can fly anywhere, anytime. But if you give what belongs to the Lord, no itid tayo, iti kukwa, iti apo, na binbendisyonan, di ay nabati. Amen? Ang dami. Uh, about obedience. Obeying the word of God. Obeying the word of God. Okay, another. Continuous service. Every member is a minister. What is your ministry? Do you have a ministry? The secret. Service unto God creates the extra oil in us. The secret to the extra oil, paano ba ma, uh, mapapasa atin yung extra oil na sinasabi sa Matthew chapter 25? The secret to the extra oil is serving the Lord. It's service to the Lord Jesus. The secret to the extra oil is service, ministry, serving God, serving others. Continuous service. Continuous service. Tuloy-tuloy nga panagserbi tayo kakabsa. Ang sabi po sa 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. I love this verse. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Let nothing move you. Wala pong, uh, ano yun? Let nothing move you. Ang kumati makaguntin ka. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Ti panagserbi tayo iti Diyos. Hanga barang barang. Abdati reward na. Abdati gunguna na. Iti agserbi kini Apo Diyos. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Hindi po sayang, mga kapatid. Whatever we do for the Lord Jesus and for other people, there is a reward. God will reward us. So, what to do to keep standing firm in the last days? Ano po yung gagawin natin? Gagawin natin para we are standing firm kahit na anong mangyari. But we are steadfast. We are immovable. We are unshakable. God is unshakable. Pero ang mga anak, ni, anak din niya, they are unshakable even when storm comes. Because we are children of God. And the child of God cannot be shaken. The throne of God cannot be shaken. God cannot be shaken. If it, and if you are a child of God, you cannot be shaken. So another, number three, continuous proclamation. Proclaim God's message. Reach out to the world. Reach out to your world. Ha, saan ka man? Kahit na saan ka? Wherever you are. Proclaim the word of God. Talk to someone else about God.
continuous proclamation. This is the great commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel into all creation. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Dito po sa Gibraltar, may meeting kami noon many years, a uh, few years ago. Kasama namin ang ibang mga pastors ng uh, churches sa Body of Christ. And then, nag-uusap yung uh, isang grupo, yung sabi nila, Sister Vilma, may LP ka ba? Sa loob-loob ko, ano yung atati LP? And then, of course, meron. Anak mo't ah. Kaya kung mo yung LP niya ibagbagada, awa mo't ti LP iti free believers. And then narinig ko, yung palang LP, license to preach. Oh, license to preach pala yun. May lisensya ka ba na mag-preach? Parang ganun. Because in other churches, they have to license their people para pwede silang tumayo kahit na saan sila tatayo na mag-preach ng word of God. So, hindi basta-basta sa kanila na tatayo ka and then you're going to tell them that John 3.16, the love of God. No. Kailangan may license ka. Pero sa ating free believers, praise the Lord. Our license is the word of God. Our license is the great commission. Go and preach the gospel. That is our LP. Continuous proclamation of the message. Reaching out to people who are in need. Reach out to people who are in need. Be fruitful and multiply. One reason kanina na hindi ma-rapture ang maraming uh, believers because they are unfruitful. No fruit. Wala pong bunga. Sa buhay, walang nakikitang bunga ng Espiritu Santo. And then wala nang bunga ng Espiritu Santo sa buhay, wala pang bunga ng mga kaluluwa na nare-reach out. Number four, continuous worship. Continuous worship. So, worshiping God is our supreme purpose. Is the supreme purpose for which we were created. You and I were made to worship. Lahat po ng ginagawa natin for the Lord, it is worship. But of course, we can say, worshiping God from our heart, we can sing unto Him our love song. Continuous worship, it is our love and adoration to God. Do you love the Lord? O minsan, kung matagal ka ng believer, nawawala na, naging faded love na. Pero kung bago-bago ka pa, pa lang na kristyano, wow! You cannot wait for Sunday to come. You are so in love with the Lord. It is our love and it is our adoration to the Lord. Worship. Worship. May mga daily disciplines din po tayo, ano? Uh, it is prayer, praise, and the word. Uh, praise and worship can be through singing. Can sing and sing, then we are encouraged, we are lifted up. Can sing, but worship is not only singing. Worship is everything you do for your Lord, for your God. So it is the supreme purpose for which we are created. Continuous worship. Alam po ang gagawin, ang gagawin po natin sa langit when we go to heaven. It's worship. Worship God. So no, kung hindi mo alam dito ang mag-worship, how can you go to heaven? Our praise and worship here on earth as a rehearsal for our worship in heaven. Kung dito nga ayaw mo pang magpalakpak, ayaw mo pang mag-raise hands, how can you be a worshiper in heaven? Hallelujah. Continuous worship. God, 
created us to worship Him. So kahit na itong apat lang ang ating uh, pag-aaralan ngayon, pag-aaralan ngayon, what to do to keep standing firm in the last days. I hope it is enough, pero marami pa. Marami pa, hindi pa natin na-discuss lahat. But that can be enough for now. We go to our conclusion. Okay, again, we uh, return to our text kanina in Matthew 24 verse 14. Sabi po doon, God has a promise for us. Ano yung sabi sa Matthew 24 14? He who stands firm to the end will be saved. He who stands firm to the end will be saved. There is, an, there is an encouragement or there's a warning to stand firm until the end. Ano man ang mangyari sa ating buhay. We stand immovable and steadfast. And then, sabi doon, he who stands firm to the end will be saved. So there's salvation. God has promised salvation for us. We are saved already when we receive the Lord Jesus. But there is a salvation of the body, of the soul, and of the spirit. Jesus is coming to save us, our body. Salvation of our spirit, soul, and body. Jesus prepared heaven for us. He is a master architect. He is an engineer. He went to heaven to prepare the place for us. And then he is coming back to take us with him. Jesus prepared heaven for us. The salvation. He who stands firm to the end will be saved. It's heaven. Our final home. Where there is no more tears. No more disease. No more sickness. No more night. No more difficulties, no more problems. Wala pong patay doon, walang lamay doon, lahat buhay. He prepared our dwelling place. He prepared our mansion in heaven. Pero alam nyo, sabi ni Park Yung Yu, hindi po lahat ng mga believer ay malalaki lahat ang mansion sa langit. No. It depends on how you serve the Lord here on earth. Marami yung mga uh, believers na they are so well known in on earth. Mga pastors, evangelists, they are so well known. Pero pagdating pala daw sa langit, maliit ang bahay. Hindi naman lahat. Pero marami namang mga believers ang parang they are not well known but they are serving, are serving God faithfully. And when they went to heaven, we have a big mansion. Praise the Lord. He prepared our dwelling place. He prepared, he is preparing or because gapu uh, iti panagserbi tayo iti ako. Those are materials for our mansion in heaven. Amen. Praise God. We can read our last verse. James chapter 5 verse 8. You too be patient. And stand firm. Because the Lord's coming is near. Ito po ang sabi ni James. Number one, be patient. Ag-anos tayo. Kumbaga ni Bishop Panyak na ito, ag-anos ka ah. Anusam. Be patient. Be patient. While we wait for the Lord's coming, let us be patient. And let as do what we can do. And then number two na gagawin natin, sabi ni James, stand firm. Because the Lord's coming is near. Thank you so much. That is already a very long message on standing firm. I hope na naawatan tayo. I hope na nakaadal tayo. Dito'y nga topic tayo. Let us stand firm until our last breath. Ang gana iti maudi nga angas tayo 
Saan tayo ko mga magungun iti panamati tayo kakabsa? Saan tayo ko mga matumba? Saan tayo nga umatras? Ngam tumakder tayo, iti panamati tayo kini ako Diyos. God bless everyone. May the Lord bless you all. Amen.